special thanks to Patreon support Transfighter 8 for making this video possible. Hello ladies and gentlemen, Scare Tool here bringing you another Minecraft Cold War aircraft tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll be going ahead and building the Grumman X-29. The Grumman X-29 was an American experimental aircraft that tested a forward swept wing, canard control surfaces, and other novel aircraft technologies. The X-29 was developed by Grumman and the, the two built were flown by NASA and the United States Air Force. The aerodynamic instability of the X-29's airframe required the use of computerized fly-by-wire control. Composite materials were used to control the aeroelastic divergent twisting experience by forward swept wings and to reduce weight. The aircraft first flew in 1984 and two X-29s were flight tested through 1991. Um, the aircraft obviously didn't really go uh, much further. Um, it was just used as an experimental um, capability mainly for testing uh, the aircraft technologies. Uh, forward swept wings were kind of a new thing or a, a thing that was kind of being explored at the time and also canards were also starting to emerge at that time. Um, especially some of the European type aircraft and even some of the Soviet Union aircraft. Um, so this was just kind of a way for the United States to test those um, test those features and the X-29 was kind of born from that. Um, the project is currently uh, retired and the flight testing is basically ending in the early 90s. So a uh, cool aircraft nonetheless. Um, has a really cool unique design. I think this actually does appear in Ace Combat as well. So, uh, or at least a somewhat close representative of, uh, of this aircraft, but kind of a cool um, aircraft and looks a little futuristic, a little, uh, little, um, I, yeah, I, I'm what can I say, futuristic. Um, so perfect for like any kind of like super modern, I think like maybe uh, warfare type maps or something like that. Um, I think this aircraft definitely has a place. Now, uh, the version we have in front of us here is equipped with missiles. This wasn't a typical loadout uh, for this aircraft. And as far as I know, this aircraft was never actually tested with uh, any type of armament or um, missile systems. It was st strictly just a test bed. However, our uh, patron that made this uh, or asked for this vehicle did uh, ask for these missiles to be put on it. Uh, very similar to that of the ones that are on the aircraft in Ace Combat. Um, so... Theoretically speaking, if this was a aircraft that was put into service or mass produced, the pylons may have looked like this. Um, this isn't trying to say that this was exactly 100% correct, and if you are looking for a 100% accurate model, you'll just want to remove those pylons located on the underside of the wings. Uh, but just want to go ahead and throw that out there in case anybody is uh, curious or interested um, in anything about that further. Anyways, before we go and jump into taking a look at the build, I do want to give a special links to Patreon supporter Trench Fighter 8 for making this tutorial possible. If you guys are interested in supporting the channel where you already do, feel free to check my Patreon page. Link is always in my video descriptions. Where you can go and pledge a small amount to the channel every month and in doing so earn a small vehicle request to your choosing. It really helps support the work I do on my channel and is greatly appreciated. So definitely feel free to check that out. Again, links are always in my video descriptions. With that though, let's go and dive in and take a look here at the X-29. So the X-29, we have the front nose here, the aircraft, very slim um, aircraft. Um, I mean, what else really to say about it? Um, so very slim aircraft. We've got the canopy here, the inlets here for the um, two engines, obviously. Moving back further, we have uh, basically the slope here of the fuselage as the engines flow, or the um, intakes flow into the single engine. On the back, we have the forward swept wings, as you can see on both sides there, and the canards located right after the um, inlets there. And on the back, we have the vertical stabilizer, uh, pretty traditional stabilizer, nothing too fancy with that. Uh, but overall, pretty simple aircraft, Not nothing too difficult, uh, nice good small size, and just a fun kind of futuristic one that you can definitely uh, modify into making some cool kind of uh, modern, I guess, military type fighters. Anyways though, uh, let's go and move into the tutorial by beginning with our first layer, layer number one. Alright guys, so moving into our first layer, we go ahead and start off with layer 2. Now we're starting off layer 2 here because uh, we get a better basis of the aircraft built. And uh, especially if you aren't building the aircraft with the pylons, this is kind of a good layer to kind of start from. Basically layer 1 is going to pretty much solely involve us putting the missiles onto those pylons. So just want to throw that out there and I will talk about those a little bit later if you do want to avoid the pylons. Uh, but anyways, let's go ahead and... Uh, talk about layer 2. Now before we go and dive into it, I do want to mention that if you're completely new to my aircraft tutorials, the way I like to start these tutorials, I like to do half on half off. What this means is we're building the entire center line of the aircraft and then the right side on camera. 
uh, between layers, the right side will need to be copied over, and that will be copied over by you guys, um, basically between layers, and this aircraft is completely symmetrical, so whatever we do on one side will be on the other side, so hopefully there isn't any real confusion when it comes to that. And once we kind of get through the first few layers here, it'll make a little bit more sense as what we're kind of doing, and you'll get the hang of it, no problem. Um, in addition, uh, I do want to mention that there is a landing version for this aircraft available as well. We will be building the aircraft in flight and then going back and adding the landing gear on as a modification. If you do want to build this aircraft landed, let's make sure that we get this position correctly to go ahead and get started. So for this, we want to go ahead and make sure that layer two here is basically two and a half blocks up from the surface if we take a look at these quartz top slabs. So these quartz top slabs here are going to, that are going to be located near the front of the aircraft are going to be basically our indication of how high we need to build this layer up. You can see we have two and a half uh, basically uh, spaces here, uh, basically two full blocks and then the quartz top slab above that. So make sure that is positioned correctly. Um, for your ground if you are wanting to build it landed. Obviously, if you are building this um, in flight, you don't have to worry about that at all. You have plenty of space as long as you're uh, not going to go and run into the block height or the build height limit. Anyways, let's go ahead and uh, get started with this layer. So first thing we want to do is we're going to place down two iron trap doors, followed by one, two, three, and four quartz top slabs. Now when it comes to this section right here, uh, we're going to go ahead and place down a row of quartz full blocks across the top of this section. Um, well, Depends here. So, depending on what version you're on, if you're on Bedrock or Pocket Edition, I will I would place down a row of uh, pistons. There or not row of pistons. Sorry, a row of smooth quartz. That's going to be 14 blocks in total. If you are on Java, what we're going to do is we're going to place down 14 quartz blocks that go above this space. So this would technically be going into layer number three. And we're going to go ahead and then place down pistons underneath these with the basically the extended portion of the piston. Uh, or the part that extends facing downwards and we're going to come back to that a little bit later and I'm going to show you guys why um, a little bit later but just go ahead and leave it as like this for right now if you're on Java again if you're on better car pocket edition I'd recommend placing down just a row of quartz full blocks at this point we're going to then place down one two three four five and quartz top slabs after that row right there two iron trap doors and two dark oak trap doors on the end with that done, going up to the front and going to the sides, we're going to place down two iron trap doors off these two smooth quartz top slabs here, so your third and fourth. We're going to go then take our smooth quartz and we're going to place down a row of one, two, three, four, and five smooth quartz top slabs. After that, again, um, if you are on Bedrock or Pocket Edition, I would place down a row of seven of quartz full blocks. If we're on Bedrock, we're going to place down a row of one, two, three, six, or one, two, three, four, five, six quartz full blocks um, above the space here. Actually, in seven, so row seven there, and going to the bottom here, we're just going to place down our pistons like that on the bottom there. So you have that that goes all the way across. Anyways, uh, once that's all done there, uh, we then want to go ahead and continue on by taking our quartz top slabs, place now one, two, three, four quartz top slabs back, and then one, two, three, four, and five iron trap doors after that. Um, again, if you are on uh, Java or, or sorry, Bedrock and Pocket Edition. Uh, you can go ahead and just place down these quartz full blocks here as well on top here just to make sure that you are kind of at the same uh, level as Java and there won't be any confusion later when we go back and uh, or when we start layer number three. So I just recommend doing those blocks up on top there well as well again if you're on um, if you're on uh, Bedrock or Pocket Edition. Anyways though continuing on we're going to go and then go to the side row here we're going to go, ahead and go to our third quartz full block back we're going to place down an iron trap door to the side of it and then a second iron trap door followed by a row of four of quartz top slabs. So one, two, three, four. And then after those quartz top slabs, we're going to place down a row of one, two, and three skeleton skulls like that. After that, we're going to take our iron trap doors, one, two, three, four, and five iron trap doors forward. Then we're going to go ahead and go one, two, three iron trap doors, and then one, two, just like that. And after we have that all done, that's going to kind of create the bottom portion there of our canards, or really our canards in general. And that right there is going to do it for the fuselage. Now at this point, we're going to be going ahead and building out to the sides and we're going to go ahead and build our pylons. Again, these pylons here are kind of an extension of a more kind of fantasy type of uh, loadout for this aircraft. So if you do not want to include these pylons, I obviously am not <laughs> going to force you to uh, include them. But you can uh, obviously add these on if you want a little bit of armament or something of that sort. Anyways, to go ahead and build these, we're going to go to the skeleton skull here. We're going to count out one, two, and three blocks out to the side. Same thing over here, one, two, three. We're going to place down an iron trap door like so. After that iron trap door, we're going to place down a daylight detector. And uh, we can go and turn that to the night mode as well to avoid that from stick from uh, popping up. And then after that, we're going to then place down a quartz stair. 
like so, and then two direct walls going back from the quartz stair. After that's all done, we want to go and then go off this uh, iron trap door out to the side. Uh, basically like this, so skip in space, we're going to place our daylight detector, again turn that to night mode, and an iron trap door coming off of it, and same thing we did going toward the back here. We're going to place down um, our, polish, our smooth quartz stair and our two direct walls back from it like that. And after we have that done, we can go and then delete these uh, blocks we used to build up to the sides, and that right there will basically create your four pylons there uh, for the aircraft. With that all complete though, that is going to wrap up what we have there for layer 2. And with that, let's go ahead and drop down to layer number 1. Alright guys, so layer 1 here is definitely for those that are wanting to include the pylons. So if you did build the pylons, then layer 1 is going to be for you. If you did not build the pylons, then go ahead and completely disregard this layer. Uh, but anyways, let's go ahead and dive into it. Uh, basically what we're going to be doing here is building the missiles onto the pylons. So pretty simple, we're going to place down a polished black stone top set on the bottom of the iron trap door. Then one, two, three, um, birchwood fence gates back, and then a smooth quartz top set on the end here. We're going to place down a birchwood fence gate, come off the side there of that slab to both sides, opened up toward it, item frame, a black concrete block, and a birchwood sign on the side of that um, slab like so. Then going forward, we're going to place down a wither skeleton skull. After that, we're going to place down an air polished black stone slab here, wither skeleton skull, the one, two, three, uh, fence gates back, a quartz top slab, birchwood fence gate like this to both sides of the slab, opened up toward it, a item frame, black concrete, and then a birchwood sign there on the side there if you're on Java. So again, this feature here uh, with the sign on the item frames is going to be only for Java. If you're on Bedrock or Pocket Edition, just place down the item frame and disregard that sign. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the missiles, and uh, you'll be doing the same thing there for both uh, both sides for all four missile pylons. Anyways, that right there is going to conclude layer number one. Let's move on to layer number three. Before we move on to layer three, I just now realized the whole reason we uh, did these pistons and the blocks on top there, I wanted to talk about well, why we're doing that if you're on Java. So if you're on Java, uh, we can use a command slash give at p minecraft colon debug stick. And it should kind of pop up there and we can press tab and it should autofill. So this is the command right here that we want. Press the enter, it will give us this kind of, uh, I guess, sparkly or light up stick. And what you can do is you can right click these pistons and actually get rid of that extended portion of it. And what that does is create a kind of smoother transition here for the bottom of the aircraft. Um, and it kind of improves our shaping for the most part. So if we take a look at it from the side here, we get that nice smooth um, sloping there, which is what we want on the bottom of the fuselage. Um, so that right there will basically be applied to all those pistons at the bottom and the reason we placed down these blocks up on top is that if you do place a block that updates the block space next to one of these pistons it will cause the pistons to uh, revert back to their normal state so that uh, little pit part that sticks up that wooden part will reappear. Um, so I just want to go ahead and put this on top here just so we don't have any difficulties later on in the build. So uh, that right there though is going to conclude what we have for that and let's move on to layer 3 now. All right, guys, moving into our next layer, we moved into layer number uh, three. For layer three to get started with here, we're going to place down a um, piston on top of this iron trap door here, a quartz slab going forward, and then one, two, three end rods, and then a chain like that going forward. Going back from the piston, we're going to place down one, two, three, four, five quartz full blocks. Now, at this point, a little tricky, we do have uh, the cockpit that pops in here. So we do have the pistons on the bottom here, um, but right here you can choose to leave a space of three or replace those quartz blocks right there with three black concrete. Um, either way will work. You can leave the concrete if you don't want to mess with the pistons again. Um, not really that big of a deal, but you can use black here to close off this cockpit so you don't have a weird white void in here. Or um, you can go ahead and choose to uh, leave it open and build an interior if you do want to build a cockpit or something for this aircraft. For us, we're not going to build an interior, so we're just going to go ahead and fill, uh, have these three blocks here to go ahead and kind of fill in that void. Now at this point here, uh, basically these quartz full blocks are going to go ahead and go all the way back for a row of 18 blocks. Um, however, on the back here, it kind of depends on what you want to do. Uh, for this aircraft. So I'm going to show you guys a couple different versions you can go ahead or a couple things you could do on the back here if you are kind of wanting to do be a little bit more realistic. Uh, the first one being is if the aircraft is landed and the engine turned off we have this row of quartz. We're going to go ahead and place down a black concrete block which will be on top of this last iron trap door here and a stone button on the side. And that right there is just going to signify that our engine is off. If you want the engine on we're going to go ahead and place down a orange stained glass Pane that will be on top of this iron trap door, or sorry, full block, and then we'll place down a glowstone block replacing this quartz block like that. It'll kind of create a better kind of look there for the engine, and that's with the engine on. So just a couple different options there for you guys to kind of fit your needs, and you can go ahead and tailor that to whatever um, 
when you're displaying the aircraft. Anyways, after that's done, we're going to then place down a skeleton skull on the side of this piston on the front here, followed by a white stained glass pane, two anisite walls, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, and twenty-three smooth quartz blocks back, a diorite wall, a polished uh, black stone brick wall, and then a black stained glass pane there on the very end. After that, uh, we can go then go up to the front here. If you're on Java, we can go ahead and adjust this piston. Um, if again, if on you're on a different version, you can go ahead and use a uh, quartz stair or quartz full block here. Will work either um, either one of those will work. But we'll go ahead and adjust this on Java with um, a right click there to go ahead and make that our piston or our piston um, changed into that format. After that, though, uh, we want to go and then place down a row of two of iron trap doors on top of these ones here, and then a black concrete block followed by one and two quartz full blocks. We're gonna go then place down two uh, diorite walls, like that, two white stained glass panes, and then after that, we wanna go and then place down a daylight detector here on this uh, block like that. So we're gonna skip a space from those glass panes, and then place down a daylight detector. We're gonna follow this up with a row of one, two, three, four, five, and six and seven, smooth quartz blocks back followed by two daylight detectors and then an iron trap door here on the end. Now right here is where things do get a little tricky. Um, using our debug stick on Java we can go ahead and close the trap door. Um, so by going ahead and doing selected open true we can go ahead and right click this to open to false and it will kind of force this to close with the daylight detectors. If you are on a different version you may have to use birchwood trap doors um, or uh, basically uh, switch these daylight detectors to night mode. Either one will work. Uh, probably birch with trapdoors maybe being your best uh, option. But uh, again, kind of kind of sucky that that's the deal here, but just wanted to kind of reference that. Um, but again, you can turn these to night mode if you guys want. Um, so again, that is up to you guys. Anyways, though, with that all uh, done there, we're going to go back up to our intakes. We're going to go and place down two iron, or sorry, three iron trapdoors on the side there of the black concrete and two iron trapdoors. And again, using our debug stick, we can close these. In this case here, you're definitely going to want to use birchwood trapdoors if you do not have access to the debug stick. We're going to go then take our white carpet, and we're just going to place down white carpet on the remaining iron trapdoors here for our canard up here coming off this intake. After that, uh, we want to go then place down a block that's going to drop down from this... Uh, from this uh, daylight detector like that to the side here. We're going to place down a skeleton skull at a slight angle like so, going back from it. And then going back from the skeleton skull, we're going to place down a daylight detector. And then we're going to then place down one, two, three smooth quartz blocks, or slabs, sorry, and then two daylight detectors after that. Once we have that done, we're going to place down another daylight detector next to this one. This time, two quartz slabs, one, two. And again, two daylight detectors going back from that. Next row is going to be a... Uh, Row of one and two of quartz slabs, daylight detector like that going toward the front, and we then want to place down two daylight detectors like that going toward the rear. Our next row is going to be another daylight detector here to the side, then two quartz top slabs back, and then two, sorry, one daylight detector like that going back like that. Next row is going to be a, another quartz slab right here, daylight detector like that going, or actually, sorry, two quartz slabs like that. Daylight detector, daylight detector coming off the front there and daylight detector coming off the back. We're going to then place down a narrow daylight detector like this coming off the side. A smooth quartz slab and a narrow daylight detector right there in that corner there. And then our next uh, section here, quartz slab here. Daylight detector coming off both sides of that quartz slab like so. And that right there will basically form up your wings there for the uh, aircraft. And with that, that will pretty much conclude this layer. Uh, one thing to also add is going to be a skeleton skull on the side of the second quartz block, and then an end rod coming off of it going forward. Anyways though, that right there is going to conclude what we have for layer 3. Looking at from above here, this we should have for the top down view. With that, let's go ahead and move into layer number 4. Alright guys, moving into our next layer, we have layer number 4. For layer 4 to get started with here, we're going to begin with by placing down a dark oak wood trap door on top of this quartz block here, followed by a daylight detector, and then a polished black stone slab. We're going to go ahead and place down 1, 2, 3 black stained glass blocks, and then a row of smooth quartz. This row in total is going to go all the way to the back here, being a total of 19 blocks in total, a polished black or polished uh, blackstone brick slab, and then a dark oak trap door on the end there. Going back up to the front, we're going to go and work our way to the sides. We're going to place down a wither skeleton squad a slight angle on top of that block there. Then two polished uh, blackstone slabs back, two narrow brick stairs. Coming off, uh, going back from the narrow brick stairs, we're going to take our quartz blocks. We're going to place down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 
and 12 quartz full blocks back then one two three four five and six quartz stairs back and then a skeleton skull on both sides of this uh quartz block here now once that's done going back up to the front here we're gonna place down a daylight sector on top of this iron trap door here again we can use our debug stick to close this trap door on the bottom there or you can turn it to night mode either one then we're going to place down a smooth quartz slab, followed by a piston right here, and then a smooth quartz full block. We can use our debug stick here to modify the piston to look like that, or if you're on a different version, you can use a quartz stair in its place, like so. Um, but yeah, we're going to go with the piston here since we're on Java. We're going to then place down two direct walls back from that block, and then two white stained glass panes back from that. And once we have that all complete there, that is going to wrap up layer 4. Take a look at it from above this, we should have it for the top down view. And with that, let's go ahead and drop or move into layer number five and moving into our next layer we have layer five for layer five to go ahead and start with we're going to go to this second uh black stained glass block we're going to place down an air brick slab two black stained glass blocks back from that we're going to go then place down two pistons if you're on a different version go ahead and use two quartz full blocks uh after that we're going to go ahead and place down a quartz slab quartz stair two daylight detectors a direct wall and then a iron trap door with a direct wall Going to the sides here, we're going to place down a black or a wither skeleton skull on top of this polished black stone slab at a slight angle like so. Two black stained glass panes, followed by one, two, or two skeleton skulls, and then a skeleton skull here at a slight angle. If you're on Java, we can go ahead and change these two pistons here uh, by using our debug stick like that on the sides. After that, we're going to go then place down two iron trap doors. This one iron or this one daylight detector will open this iron trap door here. So again, you can use the debug stick to close it, or you can change these two daylight detectors to night mode. Either one will work. After this, though, we want to go then go to this block on the back here. So on top of this quartz block, we're going to go ahead and place down a block on top of this one, followed by a second, third, and fourth going forward. So you have a row of four here. We're going to place down a direct wall on both ends. Skeleton skull like this come off the front, and a white stained glass pane coming off the back there after that's done we're going to place down an iron trap or sorry actually first off a birchwood sign on the sides of these direct walls so on the side of the front one there there just the front one on both sides we're going to go ahead and then place down an iron trap door here using a debug stick we can close it and then after that we want to go ahead and then grab an item frame place down an item frame here and then a black bed in the item frame rotated facing backwards and then a birchwood sign over the side of it if you're on Java. After that, though, we're going to go then place down two iron trap doors and two de using our debug stick, we can close those iron trap doors or use birchwood uh, trap doors instead. Anyways, that right there will conclude. We have four layer number uh, five for the build. And with that, let's go ahead and move into our last final layers. All right, guys, so going ahead and moving into our last final layers, uh, we have layers six, seven, eight, nine and ten these right here are going to basically involve solely putting the vertical stabilizer onto the aircraft for this we're going to go ahead and place down a row of one two and three of smooth quartz blocks and then a white stained glass pane on the back there we're going to go then place down a white stained glass pane here two smooth quartz blocks back and then a direct wall here on the end we're going to go then place down there two smooth quartz blocks up on top here an air direct wall right here and we're going to go ahead and also place down three birch blood buttons that go down here on the sides like so after that, we're going to then place down two smooth quartz blocks here, then a white stained glass pane, and then two iron trap doors on top of those two blocks, like that. At this point, uh, the last thing we have to do here is to put a banner on the side here, which is basically the tail serial number, and then it also had NASA written in red letters on the aircraft. So I'm going to go ahead and grab those materials, and I'm going to show you guys how to make those banners. Alright guys, so going ahead and moving into this banner design, it's super simple to do. We're going to go ahead and grab a loom, go into our loom where you need a white banner, black dye, red dye, and white dye. We're going to place our white banner in the loom, followed by our black dye. We're going to go and select the brick pattern that looks like this. Place that banner back into the loom, our white dye. We're going to go and uh, basically split the banner in half with white on the top, so it's going to look like this. And then we want to go and place that banner in our loom, followed by our red dye. And we're going to go and do the line across the top, like so, for white dye. And that right there is going to create this uh, banner design, which will go on the side of this block here to both sides to basically represent that tail serial number as well as that NASA right on the side there. Obviously it's not perfect, but it's kind of the best we can do at this scale and uh, with the resources we have in this game. Um, with that all done though, one thing I also want to change here is this stone, or this core stairs actually going to be replaced with a skeleton skull. So that actually should be like that on both sides. Um, there was a 
little mix up there um, on the original model so there, there should be like that on both sides though before we uh, go ahead and wrap up our final layers here I also want to go ahead and add that we want to go ahead and go to the side here of these narrow brick stairs from place down two iron frames two white beds and those iron frames rotated to face forward and then two birchwood signs on the side there of those stairs if you're on Java in addition to this, uh, we do want to go ahead and add on this uh, quartz stair here, which for some reason did not get transferred over. Not sure why, but it didn't. Um, basically, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go to our second quartz uh, top slab here. We're going to place down a uh, quartz upside down stair there rather than that top slab. So just like that on the nose of the aircraft. All right, guys, so when it comes to the landed version of the aircraft, it's pretty simple to modify. The landing gear isn't anything too complex on it. Uh, we're going to start off with our front gear. We're going to be going ahead and go into this section here. First thing we're doing is we're going to break this quartz top slab. Now, this will cause your pistons to act up. Uh, if you're doing the landed version, I would recommend not touching the pistons until you have that completed. Uh, anyways, we're going to delete that quartz top slab, and then we want to go ahead and then delete these two blocks right here. We're going to place down two iron trap doors in this section here, followed by a direct wall that drops down like so, a birchwood fence post, and then a block of coal on the bottom here. We then have this white banner design, which is basically a white banner, a black border, and a black stripe that goes horizontally through the center this is going to go ahead and go on both sides of this block of coal like that and the last thing we need to do for that is to just go ahead and very simply place down a skeleton skull come off that um fence post toward the front there with that done we want to go ahead and then place our cord stairs um upside down to the side here we're going to go to the side of these two iron trap doors we're going to replace this iron trap door and this quartz top sub here with two upside down quartz stairs for the landing gear door that would open up for the gear to deploy uh, with that all done though, that is going to do it for our front landing gear, and let's go ahead and move on to our back. And go ahead and move into our rear landing gear, we'll be going ahead and going to this section back right here. We're going to go ahead and replace this, uh, basically this piston here, with a, um, or we're going to delete the piston to begin with, um, so it's going to be deleted, or uh, the full block, whichever you have there. So we're going to place down our birchwood fence gate with a uh, birchwood sign on the side of that. We then want to go ahead and delete this top slab here, and instead place down our iron trap door. And then delete this uh, quartz top sub here, and in its place we're going to place down a quartz upside down stair like so. On the back of the stair we're going to place down a lever, have this flicked downwards, followed by a uh, birchwood fence post. And then going down for the birchwood fence post and over at an angle we're going to place down a block of coal. A lever like so, and then we can go ahead and grab our banners here for the front wheels and use those same banners there on the side of the wheel like that for the rims there. We then want to place down a quartz top sub that's going to come down from this iron trap door here with a skeleton skull on the side of it, like so. This uh, center section right here, we're gonna go ahead and replace these um, three pistons here, or these uh, three blocks here in the center, with three full blocks to show just like that. And we're gonna go ahead and have three direct walls there that come off the bottom down like that for the, um, uh, basically for the doors here that would open up uh, and they just kind of swing in the meat in the middle there um, so it'll be like just like that and again if you're on java and you have those pistons there make sure you do go ahead and take your debug stick and re-close these pistons um, it's a little annoying i know it's just kind of uh, you know crappy with how uh, that all works but basically that's just going to be how it is and once you have that done and transferred over to both sides obviously you'll be pretty much good to go for this aircraft so that right there is going to do it for both my landing and in-flight versions for the grumman x29 experimental aircraft hopefully you guys do enjoy this tutorial and are able to put it good use if you do end up using this build i do ask you guys give me proper credit for this being from a link to my channel or this uh, uh video if this uh, does appear on any sites all i ask is that you do uh give me proper credit for it as um as long as you're going to use it uh with that though thank you guys again so much for watching uh Again, thanks to Patreon support, transfer rate for making this tutorial possible. And as always, feel free to check my Patreon page. Links are always in my video descriptions. With that, though, uh, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. This has been Gary 204, and I'll see you guys next time.